Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I wanted to do a show and tell of my favorite books. Um, I recorded this one before as a role play, like a bookstore role play, and at the end of showing all the books, it has only a 15 minute long video. And I noticed that before, like I, I recorded another show and tell. Um, I haven't uploaded yet because I'm having some issues with the audio, but it's um, my mini ears collection. And again, I noticed when I did a show and tell that it was much longer than when I did a role play. And I don't really know why that is. Um, I think with the books, it's a case that I a lot of them I read a long time ago and I don't remember all the details about it. And in a, in a role play, I feel like I kind of need to talk more about that. Um, like it's harder to tell like anecdotes about you and the book in a role play and it just doesn't last as long so I decided to just do it as a show and tell I am going to do this one soft spoken because I'm <laughs> I was going to change my top um, I'm, I just recorded my whispered ramble video which was like half an hour of whispering so my voice isn't <laughs> um great for another whisper video and a lot of you have been asking me for more soft spoken so I just want to do a little bit for everyone. So let's just get started with the books. I have a variety of like different genres here. Um, yeah, in no particular order. I'm just gonna start. So this one is called Dark Visions and it's by L.J. Smith who is the writer of the Vampire Diaries series. Um, I've never read the Vampire Diaries or seen the show, but this came out around the time that vampire things were really popular, like the Vampire Diaries and Twilight was at like the high point and um, True Blood and things like that. And so, I mean, I liked Twilight. I liked the books a lot more than the movies, but I... I was never a huge fan of vampire stories, um, but this is about, if I remember correctly, right? This is about a girl who has, um, like, psychic abilities, and she goes to this special school with other kids with abilities. They're not all psychics, they all have, like, different abilities, but it's not like X-Men. <laughs> um, and, uh, they, like, she becomes really good friends with some of the other kids, you know, she's never had friends. Um, so it's a little bit about, like, the friendship she makes, but also there is, um, and this is where I'm a little bit, um, bad on the details because it's been a while since I've read this, but they basically, um, their lives are in danger, they're being hunted by someone and they have to go on the run and there was like a psychic experiment done on them that links them all together with their abilities and it's, it becomes like really hard to know who to trust and you know who's who's a danger to you and things like that but it was so good like I I find it really sad that I can't tell you more about it because I don't remember everything. I really need to reread it because I remember that I couldn't put it down. I thought it was such a good book. Um, it's, um, it's from the Night World series, like it says here. Oh no, she also wrote the Night World series and I read those as well, but I didn't think they were nearly as good as this one. Um, it was just a really good book. I just don't remember too much about it, but if you like more like sci-fi fantasy type thing, but like darker one, then I definitely recommend uh, the Dark Visions book because I just remember not being able to put it down. I think I'm going to reread this one next when I'm kind of done with my newer books. Then another book that I have, <laughs> this is completely different, it's The Single Girls To-Do List by Lindsay Kelk. Uh, Lindsay Kelk write, writes all the I Heart books, like I Heart New York, I Heart Las Vegas. Um, I have I Heart Las Vegas and I like it, but I haven't read any of the others, so I'm kind of not in to the whole series. But this one, oh my god, um, a friend recommended it to me and I read it um, in 
2011, I had to go on a business trip to India. It was a really long flight, and I read it on the flight, and I spent a lot of it laughing out loud, like people were staring at me because it was so funny. Um, did I learn anything from it? No, it's completely useless, but it was it was written so funnily. Like if you just learn something. Um, like light to read. Uh, this is a really great book. It's basically about a girl who um, who just newly became single. She split up with her boyfriend and her two friends um, make a to-do list, kind of like a bucket list, like a like a bucket list, I guess, for um, for single people. And it, it involves, like, a lot of kind of embarrassing stories. It's, it's a lot of, you know, it involves some traveling. It involves doing a lot of things that she's never done before. Um, but it, I just, it was just such a funny book to read. Uh, it's not that big of a book either. So if you're in a pinch for something to read, I would totally recommend this. Well, it's big enough, actually, because it's kind of small print. It's got 335 pages and it's not very big print, but totally recommend it. Really good book. Um, the other one that I would, that I really love, I'm sure most of you know this, is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I love, well, I have the whole series. I don't love the whole series. The first book I thought was great. Another one of those that I couldn't put down. But then the second and particularly third book I thought was a little bit boring. Um, never watched the movies. I looked at the cast and I was like, ooh, none of them look like the way I imagined them. And in the English version, Daniel Craig plays the lead and I, I thought, I'm not a fan of Daniel Craig. Um, I love James Bond. Like, I love James Bond. And he is not my James Bond. And I can't get past that. A lot of people love him as James Bond, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of, like, comments on that. I know a lot of people really love him, but I don't think he's suave enough to be James Bond. So I can't get past that. Um, so I never watched the Swedish or the English uh, version of the movies, but I do really love the book. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into what it's about. I'm sure most of you know it. Um, it's basically about a journalist who wants to solve a murder and um, he hires like this girl who's um, kind of, I don't really know how to describe her. She's a security specialist, she's a really good hacker, but she's not like a legal person, like she's kind of living a little bit outside of the law. Um, and the first book I was so into, I was like, oh my god, this is really good. But then the third book is a lot about like court and trials and stuff. And I really didn't, I thought that was a little bit boring. Um, so I do recommend it. I mean, I think it's a great read. And if you've only seen the movies, then I, I'm pretty sure the books are going to be better. They always are. So I do recommend it if you haven't read it yet. Um, particularly the first one was just really, really good. And it is one of my favorites. And the next book I have is called A Place Called Here, and it's by Cecilia Hearn. I'm sure most of you know P.S. I Love You. Uh, if not the book, then at least the movie. Uh, she wrote P.S. I Love You. That was her first book. I have most of her books. I've kind of... I used to read, like, a book a month. And in the last... <laughs> I want to say since Netflix came out, I, I've barely been reading. I used to read a lot on planes, and I travel a lot. But since you can... Um, I used to read a lot during takeoff and landing, and then when it was really good, I just kind of got stuck in the book for the flight. But since you can use your tablet during takeoff and landing now, I don't really read anymore, which is really sad. Even if I go on holiday and I'm by the pool, I tend to play on my Nintendo 3DS or watch a, a video on my iPad or something, so I'm, I'm too digital, but I do miss 
reading and I'm trying to get back into it. Um, so I have all of her earlier books. I think I have six or seven of her books, but the ones that she wrote in recent years I don't have anymore. This, however, is my favorite. Um, it's such an inventive idea. So it's basically about um, a girl who, when she's a child, a girl she knows goes missing. Not a girl she liked. Kind of like a bully. She really kind of hated that girl. But she never got over the fact that she vanished into thin air and that they never found out what happened to her. And she became obsessed with losing things like she would constantly lose her socks you know we all have it you put two socks in the washing machine only one comes out um that happened to her all the time she would always lose one of her socks and she became absolutely obsessed with that and then one day I mean I don't want to spoil too much of the book but I can't really tell the story without doing that so um one day she goes missing herself and she ends up in a place that they call here. Here. Um, and she finds out that it's a place, I think it's not, it's not quite on earth. It's kind of like in a different dimension. Um, and she finds out it's where all missing people are. <laughs> like all the people that vanished without a trace are in this place. And they all live quite happily there. They can't get out. They can't get back to where they came from. But they all like like barter to get around. Like they trade. Some of them grow food. Some of them um, run the shop where all missing clothes and, st and, and like items go from people. And they kind of like trade to get around. She ends up in the shop and the guy is like, oh my god, you're famous here because... I have never seen so many socks from one person. Like, all of her missing socks were there. And it was just such a heartwarming book. She ends up uh, finding that girl that went missing who lives there too. And I think... Uh, yeah, like, I don't want to spoil the ending of it, but basically it was necessary for her to, to find what happened to this girl, to know that this girl was happy there. Um, it was... I don't know it was just a really really great book and it's so inventive a lot of her books are and I if you're gonna pick any other series I would highly recommend this one I think it's a nice idea I think especially since I do so much true crime I think it's nice to think that there's a place out there where missing people go and live happy I don't know if it necessarily exists oh, well actually <laughs> I don't believe that it really exists, but I am a dreamer, and I think it's a nice idea, um, which is maybe why I love this book so much. The next up is The Hunger Games. I love The Hunger Games. Again, books way over movies. I remember when this movie was coming out, there was so much buzz about it, and I thought, well, if I'm going to see it, I want to read the books first. So I got the books and I read all three in a week. I, again, couldn't put them down and all three are really, really good. Um, I remember I was going to Florida. I think it was my first trip with my friend and her parents. So it was like 2012. And I remember I started reading it a few days before we left. Probably no, probably the day before, yeah, because I was going to Scotland where my friend lives the day before and then we were going to fly together the, the next day. So I, I started reading it on the plane to Scotland and it was so good. And then I read a lot of it on the plane to Florida and then when we got there, the first day I was like, let's not do a theme park yet today. Like we're all tired, let's have a pool day. But all I really wanted to do was finish this book. And they all agreed to it, so I was like by the pool, like going through it, and then um, I finished the other two, like every chance I got over there, I was just reading them. And it's kind of become a tradition now that our first day we always have a pool day, but I really only suggested it the first time so I could finish this book. They're just so good. Um, again, I think everyone knows what they're about, but in case you don't, it's about a girl called Katniss, and she lives in kind of like... 
I think it's supposed to be like a post-apocalyptic United States. It's called Pan Am. It's divided into different districts. And the lower your district is, the poorer you are. Um, there's 13 districts, but the 13th supposedly has been destroyed, and she lives in District 12, which is the poorest. And every year, to kind of commemorate the war and to make sure that there's no new uprising, the capital, which is like the richest part, um, picks out a boy and a girl. Mm, I think it's between the ages of 12 and 16. Uh, very young anyway, to participate in the Hunger Games, which is like an arena where you fight to the death and only one person comes out victorious. Again, the premise is so good, but it is so well written. I kind of feel like I love the first movie. The second movie, I thought, didn't quite do the book justice, and then the third and fourth movie, still i still thought it was good but oh my god nowhere near as good as the books like all the books are amazing so if you've watched the movies but haven't read the books again highly recommended they're so good ah and the next can't miss it harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban it's my favorite it's my all-time favorite book um i love it so um I'm, I'm, I realize that I'm missing a book in my series. I'm going to have to go find that. Um, I love the whole series. I'll be honest about that. But I don't want to cheat and get all seven books up here. So I'm just going to pick my favorite, which is Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, by far my favorite book. By far my least favorite movie. The movie... Harry Potter and like this, the eight movies were directed by four different people. The first two was done by one person, the third was someone else, the fourth was someone else, and then five, six, seven, and eight were done by the same person. And this was the first movie that was done by someone else, and he, if I'm not mistaken, he's a Spanish director, Alfonso Cuaron. I don't want to, like, insult anyone that he might be from Latin America, but I, but I think he's a Spanish director. And I felt like... <sighs> Like, there were a lot of Spanish influences in the movie, if that makes sense. It was a very busy movie. The music was really fast, and, um... Legs were falling asleep. Um, the, the, like, the music was really fast, and I kind of felt like, um... A lot of it just... He changed a lot of the layout of the um, of the uh, of Hogwarts, which which really bothered me. Like in the first two movies, Hagrid's hut is in a straight line from Hogwarts, and in the third movie, you suddenly had to go down this whole hill and like paths to get to his hut. And I was like, why? Like, is there no continuity in this movie? It doesn't just move. Like, why did you change it? Um, and it was different than for the rest of the movies, but I, but I didn't get why they changed it from the first two. For some reason, that really bothered me. Also, I felt like all of the actors were overacting in this movie. The kids, I thought, were actually the best part of it. All the adult actors were just overacting. It's also the first movie with Michael Gambon, and I never really liked him as Dumbledore. I thought Richard Harris was like the perfect Dumbledore, so that kind of bothered me, but I know obviously why, but, um, but I think the biggest problem I had with it is that half the movie is about the time turner. Like half the movie, the second half of the movie basically starts when they go to the Shrieking Shack, Lupin turns into a werewolf, they use the time turner to save Buckbeak, in the book, that's like two chapters. Like, there's so many other things going on in the book that they just skipped over in the movie. And I don't know. I feel like... I think in general, this is most people's favorite book and most people's least favorite movie. I think a book always has more expectations. But I just thought it was the least 
Harry Potter-like movie of all of them. So, yeah, not like, not my favorite movie. But what I love so much about this book is just, again, the ingenuity. I mean, the fact that a rat that had been living with the same family for 12 years turned out to be a person that killed a bunch of people. Like, I just thought... When I read that, I was like, no. It's so freaking ingenious. And it just shows that she knew before she even wrote the first book what was going to happen with everyone. I'm sure she didn't work it out to detail, but she knew that this person was going to be a person in book three. And I love that. It also in introduced Black and Lupin, two of my favorite characters, Again, not in the movie. They're not at all like I imagined they would be. Um, and I love both Gary Oldman and David Thewlis a lot, but Gary Oldman, I can kind of see now when I'm, um, when I'm watching, when I'm reading a book, I can see him as black, but I will never see David Thewlis as Lupin, ever. Lupin just looks so different in my mind. He plays him well, but he looks very different in my mind. Um, but you know, there's so many things. I think this is like a pivotal book in the series because of these new characters who turn out to be really important because we see the Dementors for the first time. We get the Patronus charm for the first time, which all ends up being so important for the series. So I just think that this is the best Harry Potter book of them all. So big recommendation there. Um, then I also really love um, books by Des Geritsen. This particular one is The Killing Place, which is, is my favorite. If you've ever uh, watched the Rizzoli and Isles TV show, that's based on these books. She writes about Rizzoli and Isles. I read these books like years before the TV show came out. I didn't watch the TV show. I liked it a lot. But it's really nothing like the books. The characters are nothing like them. Um, but basically, Jane Rizzoli is a, t is a detective and Mara Isles is a medical examiner and they solve uh, cases together, uh, murders. But this particular one creeped me out so much that I had to, I read it almost all through the night because I couldn't go to sleep without finding out what happened. Um, Basically, uh, the Mara Isles is driving through. Um, she's driving through an area with a friend of hers, and she her car gets trapped in the snow, and so she gets out and tries to find help, and she stumbles upon this little. Um, it's not really a town. Yeah, it's like a village, a, a really small village, and all the houses have been abandoned. But, like, last minute abandoned. Like, the cars are still in the driveway. There's still plates with food on the tables. It's like everyone just dropped everything and disappeared into thin air. And, um... A few days later, Jane Rizzoli, the detective, goes out there to try and find her friend. And she finds that uh, there's a crashed vehicle nearby with four, like, badly burned bodies in it. And she has to try and figure out if her friend is one of them, and if not, like, where her friend is. And Mora, at the same time, is trying to figure out what happened to these people. Like, did they all die? Were they all taken? Um, but every time I hear a story about people vanishing, um, well, not vanishing, but, like, abandonment, like, people abandoning stuff, short notice, it always really creeps me out. So I, I had to read this all through the night until I knew what happened. <laughs> um, I think in the meantime, she has like 10 or 11 books. So if you want to start reading these, it is a long series to catch up on. But it's definitely worth it. What I love about her books is they're really well written. Like, I have the very annoying talent of knowing who did it very early on. Like, if I watch a movie or a TV show, after five minutes, I'm like, that guy did it. And I 
or that girl did it. And I'm almost always right. And I never know with her because it's usually someone who hasn't been mentioned in the book until the very end or like a very like insignificant character that was mentioned once or twice that you wouldn't think about. Um, that suddenly pops up at the end and you're like, oh yeah, he was mentioned really early on. So um, I really love that it's always unexpected and just the stories are always really different. Um, and over the course of the like 10 or 11 books, you've really seen the characters grow as well and like their personal lives have changed and it's really one of those where you can get really invested in the characters because it's a series about the same people. So um, really, really worth a read. Then the next two books are in Dutch, but one of them is actually originally, it's just a translation, it's originally an English book. Um, I think in English, I believe it's called Overkill, and it's written by Aline Ferguson. This is the Dutch title. Um, I just want to say, it's full of concert tickets. Um, when I was living in Belgium, my closet had my concert tickets stuck on it with blue tack because I used to go to a lot of concerts. I still do actually. Um, I'm going to five concerts this year. Um, at least. But um, but yeah, I, I used to have them all hanging up and then when I moved here I stuck them all in this book to preserve them so that I could hang them up here and I never took them out. <laughs> They've been in this book for 13 years and they're really um, stuck to it now, so I can't even really take them out anymore. So, anyway, um, this book was on the recommended reading list from school. Um, I don't know how it works wherever you guys live, but in Belgium, we have multiple book reports to do every year. Um both written and oral, like we usually have to write a book report and then we have to stand up in front of class and tell like the story of what the book is about and what we thought about it. And we get a list of books that we can choose from. And this was on it and if you look at the back picture, it kind of baffles me that it's on it. Now I will say, I do think it's written specifically for teenagers because it only has 128 pages, and it's a pretty, like, big font. So, um, I do think it was written specifically for teenagers, but it is, um, kind of a scary book. So, it's about uh, a girl called Lacey. She's in high school, and her former best friend, Celeste, um, she had a big fight with her, uh, is murdered. And Lacey has a dream about that. Lacey sees that happening in her dream and police suspect her because she knows a lot of details about the murder that weren't released to public. So um, they think that she killed her friend because, um, it's been a really long time since I read it, but from what I remember, they were both dancers. Um, Celeste joined the school probably just about a year before this happened and became really good friends with Lacey but she was kind of a better dancer than Lacey was so Lacey was up for this like um I think lead in a, a dance production and Celeste ended up getting it and they had a big argument about that and so that's why police think Lacey killed her because she had a motive. Now the book isn't necessarily about um, her finding who really did it. It's more about her getting through it. Like she, you know, goes to therapy. She has, she, she, I think, I believe she goes to therapy to try and figure out why she had that dream or if she can find out any details in the dream. Um, but she does end up discovering who the killer was and then it kind of becomes like a fight for her life and things like that. Like it's so well written. Um, I got this for my brother at Christmas, I want to say when I was in my, like, early 20s, um, 
because I had talked about how it was my favorite book as a teenager and he bought it for me for Christmas, but I haven't read it since my early 20s, so I don't know if it would still be one of my favorite books now. I might think it's a little too teenage-y, but I don't know. It's, again, one of those books that I really need to reread because it was so good. Um, so yeah, if you have teenagers at home, I would suggest giving this a, a read. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can find the English version of it. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I, uh, I remember looking for it in the Belgian library a while back, but I, they didn't have it, so. Um, yeah, really good read. And then the last book is definitely in Dutch. It's from a Belgian author, but I wanted to mention it just because, you know, it is one of my favorites. And it's called The Boo Books, and it's from Mark de Bell. Um, he is, uh, he writes children's and, and teenage books. A lot of the books on our school reading list are from him, and I love a lot of his books. These are my favorite. They're actually three books, but this is the omnibus, so it's like all three stories in one book. This is definitely one of those that I bought it a couple of years ago out of nostalgia, and I have read it, and I do very, I actually haven't even read the whole thing. I think I, I have a bookmark in here. Yeah, I got about this far into it. it it's definitely a, a little too childlike for me now when I read it. I'm like, I don't know. Um, I do still love it, though, just for nostalgia reasons, but it's definitely more of a children's book. Um, book books are basically these little creatures. Um, that live in a forest, and it's about um, two of them. I think they're a little brother and sister, and they're really mischievous, and the books are basically about their stories in the forest. Um, but yeah, I wanted to mention it because it is one, it was one of my favorites anyway. Um, and if you are Belgian or Dutch, and you haven't read it yet, or you have kids, um, definitely recommend it. Uh, I recommend everything from Mark DeBell. He just writes really, really good children's books. I have another one of his, actually. I don't know if I ever brought it to Ireland or if it's still in Belgium. I should really bring it. Um, but yeah. That was my favorite, or one of my favorites when I was a child. Or a teenager, actually. So, that was that. Those are... I have a, I, I have a good few books. When I look at my bookcase, I have a lot of them but not quite as many as I thought. A lot of them are series. So I have to like talk about um, the whole series when I mention them. Um, but those are some of my favorite. Let me know what some of your favorite books are. I would love to get some recommended reading. I um, am currently reading two books. and One is another Tess Gerritsen. Um And then after that, I don't know, like, the, like Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is the one that I always grab when I have nothing left to read and like when I go on vacation I will always take it to read it by the pool or on the plane it's such an easy read and I love it so um I but I would love to find some new books you know I'm going to Spain for a month um I do have to work and I have to study hopefully if I can get my head into it um you know, I'll go out for walks a lot with my parents, but there are going to be a lot of moments where I'm just going to lie in the sun and soak it in. And um, I would love to have some books with me to read then, so any recommendations would be great. I kind of read everything, but I am less into romance novels than I used to be. I'm much more into sci-fi these days. Um, sci-fi and fantasy, so if you have anything in recommendations along those lines, I would love to hear it. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye!